DC Comics, Inc. is an American comic book publisher. It is the publishing unit of DC Entertainment, a subsidiary of Warner Brothers since 1967. DC Comics is one of the largest and oldest American comic book companies, and produces material featuring numerous culturally iconic heroic characters including, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, The Flash, Green Lantern, Aquaman, Shazam, Martian Manhunter, Nightwing, Green Arrow, Hawkman, Cyborg and Supergirl. Most of their material takes place in the fictional DC Universe, which also features teams such as the Justice League, the Teen Titans, the Justice League Dark, and the Doom Patrol, and well-known villains such as Lex Luthor, Darkseid, Brainiac, the Joker, Catwoman, Ra's al Ghul, Ares, Cheetah, Professor Zoom, Sinestro, Black Manta, Ocean Master, Black Adam and Deathstroke. The company has also published non-DC Universe-related material, including Watchmen, V for Vendetta, and many titles under their alternative imprint Vertigo. The initials, DC, came from the company's popular series Detective Comics, which featured Batman's debut and subsequently became part of the company's name. Originally in Manhattan at 432 Fourth Avenue, the DC Comics offices have been located at 480 and later 575 Lexington Avenue, 909 Third Avenue, 75 Rockefeller Plaza, 666 Fifth Avenue, and 1325th Avenue of the Americas. DC had its headquarters at 1700 Broadway, Midtown Manhattan, New York City, however DC Entertainment relocated its headquarters from New York to Burbank, California in April of 2015. Random House distributes DC Comics books to the bookstore market, while Diamond Comic Distributors supplies the comics shop specialty market. DC Comics and its longtime major competitor Marvel Comics acquired in 2009 by the Walt Disney Company, WarnerMedia's main competitor together shared approximately 70% of the American comic book market in 2017. History Topic. Origins Entrepreneur Major Malcolm Wheeler Nicholson founded National Allied Publications in autumn 1934. The company debuted with the tabloid-sized New Fun, the big comic magazine number no. one with a cover date of February 1935. The company's second title, New Comics No. 1, Deck. 1935, appeared in a size close to what would become comic book standard during the period fans and historians call the golden age of comic books, with slightly larger dimensions than today's. That title evolved into Adventure Comics, which continued through issue number 503 in 1983, becoming one of the longest-running comic book series. In 2009 DC revived Adventure Comics with its original numbering. In 1935, Jerry Siegel and Joe Shuster, the future creators of Superman, created Dr. Occult, who is the earliest DC Comics character to still be in the DC Universe. Wheeler Nicholson's third and final title, Detective Comics, advertised with a cover illustration dated December 1936, eventually premiered three months late with a March 1937 cover date. The themed anthology series would become a sensation with the introduction of Batman in issue number 27 May 1939. By then, however, Wheeler Nicholson had gone. 
In 1937, in debt to printing plant owner and magazine distributor Harry Donenfeld, who also published pulp magazines and operated as a principal in the magazine distributorship Independent News, Wheeler Nicholson had to take Donenfeld on as a partner in order to publish Detective Comics No. 1. Detective Comics, Inc. was formed, with Wheeler Nicholson and Jack S. Leibowitz, Donenfeld's accountant, listed as owners. Major Wheeler Nicholson remained for a year, but cash flow problems continued, and he was forced out. Shortly afterwards, Detective Comics, Inc. purchased the remains of National Allied, also known as Nicholson Publishing, at a bankruptcy auction. Detective Comics, Inc. soon launched a fourth title, Action Comics, the premiere of which introduced Superman. Action Comics No. 1 June 1938, the first comic book to feature the new character archetype, soon known as superheroes", proved a sales hit. The company quickly introduced such other popular characters as the Sandman and Batman. On February 22, 2010, a copy of Action Comics No. 1 June 1938 sold at an auction from an anonymous seller to an anonymous buyer for $1 million, besting the $317,000 record for a comic book set by a different copy, in lesser condition, the previous year. Golden Age National Allied Publications soon merged with Detective Comics, Inc., forming National Comics Publications on September 30, 1946. National Comics Publications absorbed an affiliated concern, Max Gaines and Leibowitz All American Publications. In the same year Gaines let Leibowitz buy him out, and kept only picture stories from the Bible as the foundation of his own new company, EC Comics. At that point, Leibowitz promptly orchestrated the merger of all American and detective comics into national comics. Next he took charge of organizing National Comics, the self-distributorship independent news, and their affiliated firms into a single corporate entity, National Periodical Publications. National Periodical Publications became publicly traded on the stock market in 1961, despite the official names, National Comics and national periodical publications the company began branding itself as superman dc as early as 1940 and the company became known colloquially as dc comics for years before the official adoption of that name in 1977 the company began to move aggressively against what it saw as copyright violating imitations from other companies, such as Fox Comics' Wonder Man, which according to court testimony, Fox started as a copy of Superman. This extended to DC suing Fawcett Comics over Captain Marvel, at the time comics' top-selling character see National Comics Publications, Inc. v. Fawcett Publications, Inc., faced with declining sales and the prospect of bankruptcy if it lost, Fawcett capitulated in 1953 and ceased publishing comics. Years later, Fawcett sold the rights for Captain Marvel to DC, which in 1972 revived Captain Marvel in the new title Shazam, featuring artwork by his creator, C.C. Beck. In the meantime, the abandoned trademark had been seized by Marvel Comics in 1967, with the creation of their Captain Marvel, forbidding the DC comic itself to be called that. 
While Captain Marvel did not recapture his old popularity, he later appeared in a Saturday morning live-action TV adaptation and gained a prominent place in the mainstream continuity DC calls the DC Universe. When the popularity of superheroes faded in the late 1940s the company focused on such genres as science fiction, westerns, humor, and romance. DC also published crime and horror titles, but relatively tame ones, and thus avoided the mid-1950s backlash against such comics. A handful of the most popular superhero titles, including action comics and detective comics, the medium's two longest-running titles, continued publication. Silver Age In the mid-1950s, editorial director Erwin Donenfeld and publisher Leibowitz directed editor Julius Schwartz whose roots lay in the science fiction book market to produce a one-shot flash story in the tryout title showcase. Instead of reviving the old character, Schwartz had writers Robert Canier and John Broom, penciler Carmine Infantino, and inker Joe Cubitt create an entirely new super speedster, updating and modernizing the Flash's civilian identity, costume, and origin with a science fiction bent. The Flash's reimagining in Showcase No. 4 October 1956 proved sufficiently popular that it soon led to a similar revamping of the Green Lantern character, the introduction of the modern all-star team Justice League of America JLA, and many more superheroes, heralding what historians and fans call the Silver Age of comic books. National did not reimagine its continuing characters primarily Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman, but radically overhauled them. The Superman family of titles, under editor Mort Weisinger, introduced such enduring characters as Supergirl, Bizarro, and Brainiac. The Batman titles, under editor Jack Schiff, introduced the successful Batwoman, Batgirl, Ace the Bat Hound, and Bat Mite in an attempt to modernize the strip with non-science fiction elements. Schwartz, together with artist Infantino, then revitalized Batman in what the company promoted as the new look, re-emphasizing Batman as a detective. Meanwhile, editor Kanaya successfully introduced a whole family of Wonder Woman characters having fantastic adventures in a mythological context. Since the 1940s, when Superman, Batman, and many of the company's other heroes began appearing in stories together, DC's characters inhabited a shared continuity that, decades later, was dubbed the DC Universe by fans. With the story, Flash of Two Worlds, in Flash No. 123, September 1961, editor Schwartz with writer Gardner Fox and artists Infantino and Joe Giella introduced a concept that allowed slotting the 1930s and 1940s Golden Age heroes into this continuity via the explanation that they lived on another dimensional. Earth 2, as opposed to the modern heroes, Earth 1, in the process creating the foundation for what would later be called the DC Multiverse. DC's introduction of the reimagined superheroes did not go unnoticed by other comics companies. In 1961, with DC's JLA as the specific spur, Marvel Comics writer-editor Stan Lee and a robust creator Jack Kirby ushered in the sub-Silver Age, Marvel Age, of comics with the debut issue of The Fantastic Four. Reportedly, DC ignored the initial success of Marvel with this editorial change until its consistently strengthening sales, albeit also benefiting independent news business as their distributor as well, made that impossible. 
That commercial situation especially applied with Marvel's superior sell through percentage numbers which were typically 70% to DC's roughly 50%, which meant DC's publications were barely making a profit in comparison after returns from the distributors were calculated while Marvel was making an excellent profit by comparison. However, the senior DC staff were reportedly at a loss at this time to understand how how this small publishing house was achieving this increasingly threatening commercial strength. For instance, when Marvel's product was examined in a meeting, Marvel's emphasis on more sophisticated character-based narrative and artist-driven visual storytelling was apparently ignored for self-deluding guesses at the brand's popularity which included superficial reasons like the presence of the color red or word balloons on the cover, or that the perceived crudeness of the interior art was somehow more appealing to readers. When Lee learned about DC's subsequent experimental attempts to imitate these perceived details, he amused himself by arranging direct defiance of those assumptions in Marvel's publications as sales strengthened further to frustrate the competition. However, this ignorance of Marvel's true appeal did not extend to some of the writing talent during this period, from which there were some attempts to emulate Marvel's narrative approach. For instance, there was the Doom Patrol series by Arnold Drake, a writer who previously warned the management of the new rival's strength, a superhero team of outsiders who resented their freakish powers, which Drake later speculated was plagiarized by Stan Lee to create the X-Men. There was also the young Jim Shooter who purposely emulated Marvel's writing when he wrote for DC after much study of both companies' styles, such as for the Legion of Superheroes feature, a 1966 Batman TV show on the ABC network sparked a temporary spike in comic book sales, and a brief fad for superheroes in Saturday morning animation Filmation created most of DC's initial cartoons and other media. DC significantly lightened the tone of many DC comics—particularly Batman and Detective Comics—to better complement the camp tone of the TV series. This tone coincided with the famous go-go checks. Checkerboard cover dress which featured a black and white checkerboard strip all DC books cover dated February 1966 until August 1967 at the top of each comic, a misguided attempt by then-managing editor Erwin Donenfeld to make DC's output stand out on the newsricks. In particular, DC artist, Carmine Infantino, complained that the visual cover distinctiveness made DC's titles easier for readers to see and then avoid in favor of Marvel's titles. In 1967, Batman artist Infantino, who had designed popular Silver Age characters Batgirl and the Phantom Stranger, rose from art director to become DC's editorial director. With the growing popularity of upstart rival Marvel Comics threatening to topple DC from its longtime number one position in the comics industry, he attempted to infuse the company with more focus towards marketing new and existing titles and characters with more adult sensibilities towards an emerging older age group of superhero comic book fans that grew out of Marvel's efforts to market their superhero line to college-aged adults. He also recruited major talents such as ex-Marvel artist and Spider-Man co-creator Steve Ditko and promising newcomers Neil Adams and Denny O'Neill and replaced some existing DC editors with artist editors, including Joe Cubitt and Dick Giordano, to give DC's output a more artistic, critical eye. Kinney National, Warner Communications subsidiary 
In 1967, National Periodical Publications was purchased by Kinney National Company, which purchased Warner Brothers Seven Arts in 1969. Kinney National spun off its non-entertainment assets in 1972 as National Kinney Corporation and changed its name to Warner Communications Inc. In 1970, Jack Kirby moved from Marvel Comics to DC, at the end of the Silver Age of Comics, in which Kirby's contributions to Marvel played a large, integral role. Given carte blanche to write and illustrate his own stories, he created a handful of thematically linked series he called collectively The Fourth World. In the existing series Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen and in his own, newly launched series New Gods, Mr. Miracle, and The Forever People, Kirby introduced such enduring characters and concepts as Archvillain Darkseid and the other dimensional realm Apocalypse. Furthermore, Kirby intended their stories to be later reprinted in collected editions in a publishing format that would later be called the trade paperback, which would become a standard industry practice decades later. While sales were respectable, they did not meet DC management's initially high expectations, and also suffered from a lack of comprehension and internal support from Infantino. By 1973 the Fourth World was all cancelled, although Kirby's conceptions would soon become integral to the broadening of the DC Universe. Obligated by his contract, Kirby created other unrelated series for DC, including Commandy, The Demon, and Omac, before ultimately returning to Marvel Comics. The Bronze Age Following the science fiction innovations of the Silver Age, the comics of the 1970s and 1980s would become known as the Bronze Age, as fantasy gave way to more naturalistic and sometimes darker themes. Illegal drug use, banned by the Comics Code Authority, explicitly appeared in comics for the first time in Marvel Comics' story, Green Goblin Reborn, in The Amazing Spider-Man No. 96, May 1971, and after the code's updating in response, DC offered a drug-fueled storyline in writer Dennis O'Neill and artist Neil Adams' Green Lantern, beginning with the story. Snowbirds Don't Fly, in the retitled Green Lantern, Green Arrow No. 85, Sept. 1971, which depicted Speedy, the teen sidekick of superhero archer Green Arrow, as having become a heroin addict. Jeanette Kahn, a former children's magazine publisher, replaced Infantino as editorial director in January 1976. DC had attempted to compete with the now surging Marvel by dramatically increasing its output and attempting to win the market by flooding it. This included launching series featuring such new characters as Firestorm and Shade, The Changing Man, as well as an increasing array of non-superhero titles, in an attempt to recapture the pre-Wortham days of post-war comicdom. In June 1978, five months before the release of the first Superman movie, Khan expanded the line further, increasing the number of titles and story pages, and raising the price from 35 cents to 50 cents. Most series received eight-page backup features while some had full-length 25-page stories. This was a move the company called the DC Explosion. The move was not successful, however, and corporate parent Warner dramatically cut back on these largely unsuccessful titles, firing many staffers in what industry watchers dubbed the DC Implosion. In September 1978, the line was dramatically reduced and standard size books returned to 17-story pages but for a still increased 40 cents. 
By 1980, the books returned to 50 cents with a 25-page story count but the story pages replaced house ads in the books. Seeking new ways to boost market share, the new team of publisher Khan, Vice President Paul Levitz, and managing editor Giordano addressed the issue of talent instability. To that end, and following the example of Atlas, Seaboard Comics and such independent companies as Eclipse Comics, DC began to offer royalties in place of the industry standard work for hire agreement in which creators worked for a flat fee and signed away all rights, giving talent a financial incentive tied to the success of their work. As it happened, the implementation of these incentives proved opportune considering Marvel Comics editor-in-chief, Jim Shooter, was alienating much of his company's creative staff with his authoritarian manner and major talents there went to DC like Roy Thomas, Gene Colan, Marv Wolfman, and George Perez. In addition, emulating the era's new television form, the miniseries while addressing the matter of an excessive number of ongoing titles fizzling out within a few issues of their start, DC created the industry concept of the comic book limited series. This publishing format allowed for the deliberate creation of finite storylines within a more flexible publishing format that could showcase creations without forcing the talent into unsustainable open-ended commitments. The first such title was World of Krypton in 1979, and its positive results lead to subsequent similar titles and later more ambitious productions like Camelot 3000 for the direct market in 1982. These changes in policy shaped the future of the medium as a whole, and in the short term allowed DC to entice creators away from rival Marvel, and encourage stability on individual titles. In November 1980 DC launched the ongoing series The New Teen Titans, by writer Marv Wolfman and artist George Perez, two popular talents with a history of success. The superhero team comic, superficially similar to Marvel's ensemble series X-Men, but rooted in DC history, earned significant sales in part due to the stability of the creative team, who both continued with the title for six full years. In addition, Wolfman and Perez took advantage of the limited series option to create a spin-off title, Tales of the New Teen Titans, to present origin stories of their original characters without having to break the narrative flow of the main series or oblige them to double their workload with another ongoing title. Topic: <laughs> Modern Age This successful revitalization of the Silver Age Teen Titans led DC's editors to seek the same for the wider DC universe. The result, the Wolfman – Perez 12-issue limited series Crisis on Infinite Earths, gave the company an opportunity to realign and jettison some of the characters' complicated backstory and continuity discrepancies. A companion publication, two volumes entitled The History of the DC Universe, set out the revised history of the major DC characters. Crisis featured many key deaths that would shape the DC Universe for the following decades, and separate the timeline of DC publications into pre- and post-crisis. Meanwhile, a parallel update had started in the non-superhero and horror titles. Since early 1984, the work of British writer Alan Moore had revitalised the horror series The Saga of the Swamp Thing, and soon numerous British writers, including Neil Gaiman and Grant Morrison, began freelancing for the company. 
The resulting influx of sophisticated horror fantasy material led to DC in 1993 establishing the Vertigo Mature Readers imprint, which did not subscribe to the Comics Code Authority. Two DC Limited series, Batman, The Dark Knight Returns by Frank Miller and Watchmen by Moore and artist Dave Gibbons, drew attention in the mainstream press for their dark psychological complexity and promotion of the anti hero these titles helped pave the way for comics to be more widely accepted in literary criticism circles and to make inroads into the book industry, with collected editions of these series as commercially successful trade paperbacks. The mid 1980s also saw the end of many long running DC War comics, including series that had been in print since the 1960s. These titles, all with over 100 issues, included Sergeant Rock, G.I. Combat, The Unknown Soldier, and Weird War Tales. <laughs> Time Warner, AOL Time Warner, Warner Media Unit In March 1989, Warner Communications merged with Time Inc., making DC Comics a subsidiary of Time Warner. In June, the first Tim Burton-directed Batman movie was released, and DC began publishing its hardcover series of DC Archive editions, collections of many of their early, key comics series, featuring rare and expensive stories unseen by many modern fans. Restoration for many of the archive editions was handled by Rick Keane with color restoration by DC's longtime resident colorist, Bob LaRose. These collections attempted to retroactively credit many of the writers and artists who had worked without much recognition for DC during the early period of comics when individual credits were few and far between. The comics industry experienced a brief boom in the early 1990s, thanks to a combination of speculative purchasing mass purchase of the books as collectible items, with intent to resell at a higher value as the rising value of older issues, was thought to imply that all comics would rise dramatically in price and several storylines which gained attention from the mainstream media. DC's extended storylines in which Superman was killed, Batman was crippled and superhero Green Lantern turned into the supervillain Parallax resulted in dramatically increased sales, but the increases were as temporary as the hero's replacements. Sales dropped off as the industry went into a major slump, while manufactured collectibles Numbering in the millions replaced quality with quantity until fans and speculators alike deserted the medium in droves. DC's Piranha Press and other imprints including the mature readers line Vertigo, and Helix, a short-lived science fiction imprint were introduced to facilitate compartmentalized diversification and allow for specialized marketing of individual product lines. They increased the use of non-traditional contractual arrangements, including the dramatic rise of creator-owned projects, leading to a significant increase in critically lauded work much of it for Vertigo and the licensing of material from other companies. DC also increased publication of book store friendly formats, including trade paperback collections of individual serial comics, as well as original graphic novels. One of the other imprints was Impact Comics from 1991 to 1992 in which the Archie Comics superheroes were licensed and revamped. The stories in the line were part of its own shared universe. DC entered into a publishing agreement with Milestone Media that gave DC a line of comics featuring a culturally and racially diverse range of superhero characters. Although the Milestone line ceased publication after a few years, it yielded the popular animated series Static Shock. 
DC established Paradox Press to publish material such as the large format Big Book of series of multi-artist interpretations on individual themes, and such crime fiction as the graphic novel Road to Perdition. In 1998, DC purchased Wildstorm Comics, Jim Lee's imprint under the Image Comics banner, continuing it for many years as a wholly separate imprint, and fictional universe, with its own style and audience. As part of this purchase, DC also began to publish titles under the fledgling Wildstorm sub-imprint America's Best Comics ABC, a series of titles created by Alan Moore, including The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, Tom Strong, and Promethea. Moore strongly contested this situation, and DC eventually stopped publishing ABC. Topic 2000s In March 2003 DC acquired publishing and merchandising rights to the long-running fantasy series ElfQuest, previously self-published by creators Wendy and Richard Pinney under their Warp Graphics publication banner. This series then followed another non-DC title, Tower Comics series Thunder. Agents, in collection into DC Archive Editions. In 2004 DC temporarily acquired the North American publishing rights to graphic novels from European publishers 2000 AD and Humanoids. It also rebranded its younger audience titles with the mascot Johnny DC and established the CMX imprint to reprint translated manga. In 2006, CMX took over from Dark Horse Comics publication of the webcomic Megatokyo in print form. DC also took advantage of the demise of Kitchen Sink Press and acquired the rights to much of the work of Will Eisner, such as his The Spirit series and his graphic novels. In 2004, DC began laying the groundwork for a full continuity reshuffling sequel to Crisis on Infinite Earths, promising substantial changes to the DC Universe and side-stepping the 1994 Zero Hour event which similarly tried to retcon the history of the DCU. In 2005, the critically lauded Batman Begins film was released. Also, the company published several limited series establishing increasingly escalated conflicts among DC's heroes, with events climaxing in the Infinite Crisis limited series. Immediately after this event, DC's ongoing series jumped forward a full year in their in-story continuity, as DC launched a weekly series, 52, to gradually fill in the missing time. Concurrently, DC lost the copyright to Superboy while retaining the trademark when the heirs of Jerry Siegel used a provision of the 1976 revision to the copyright law to regain ownership. In 2005, DC launched its All-Star line, evoking the title of the 1940s publication, designed to feature some of the company's best-known characters in stories that eschewed the long and convoluted continuity of the DC universe. The line began with All-Star Batman and Robin the Boy Wonder and All-Star Superman, with All-Star Wonder Woman and All-Star Batgirl announced in 2006 but neither being released nor scheduled as of the end of 2009. DC licensed characters from the Archie Comics imprint Red Circle Comics by 2007. They appeared in the Red Circle line, based in the DC Universe, with a series of one-shots followed by a mini-series that lead into two ongoing titles, each lasting ten issues. Topic 2010s In 2011, DC rebooted all of its running titles following the Flashpoint storyline. The reboot called The New 52 gave new origin stories and costume designs to many of DC's characters. 
DC licensed pulp characters including Doc Savage and the spirit which it then used, along with some DC heroes, as part of the first wave comics line launched in 2010 and lasting through fall 2011. In May 2011, DC announced it would begin releasing digital versions of their comics on the same day as paper versions. On June 1, 2011, DC announced that it would end all ongoing series set in the DC Universe in August and relaunch its comic line with 52-issue hash ones, starting with Justice League on August 31 written by Jeff Johns and drawn by Jim Lee, with the rest to follow later on in September. On June 4, 2013, DC unveiled two new digital comic innovations to enhance interactivity, DC2 and DC2 Multiverse. DC2 layers dynamic artwork onto digital comic panels, adding a new level of dimension to digital storytelling, while DC2 Multiverse allows readers to determine a specific story outcome by selecting individual characters, storylines and plot developments while reading the comic, meaning one digital comic has multiple outcomes. DC2 will first appear in the upcoming digital first title, Batman 66, based on the 1960s television series and DC2 Multiverse will first appear in Batman, Arkham Origins, a digital first title based on the video game of the same name. In 2014, DC announced an eight-issue miniseries titled, Convergence. Which began in April 2015. In 2016, DC announced a line wide relaunch titled DC Rebirth. The new line would launch with an 80 page one shot titled DC Universe Rebirth, written by Jeff Johns, with art from Gary Frank, Ethan Van Syver, and more. After that, many new series would launch with a twice-monthly release schedule and new creative teams for nearly every title. The relaunch was meant to bring back the legacy and heart many felt had been missing from DC characters since the launch of the new 52. Rebirth brought huge success, both financially and critically. Topic DC Entertainment DC Entertainment, Inc. is a subsidiary of Warner Brothers that manages its comic book units and intellectual property characters in other units as they work with other Warner Brothers units. In September 2009, Warner Brothers announced that DC Comics would become a subsidiary of DC Entertainment, Inc., with Diane Nelson, president of Warner Premiere, becoming president of the newly formed holding company and DC Comics president and publisher Paul Levitz moving to the position of contributing editor and overall consultant there. Warner Brothers have owned DC Comics since 1967. On February 18, 2010, DC Entertainment named Jim Lee and Dan Didio as co publishers of DC Comics, Jeff Johns as Chief Creative Officer, John Rood as EVP Executive Vice President of Sales, Marketing and Business Development, and Patrick Calden as EVP of Finance and Administration. In October 2013, DC Entertainment announced that the DC Comics offices would be moved from New York City to Warner Brothers Burbank, California, headquarters in 2015. The other units, animation, movie, TV and portfolio planning, had preceded DC Comics by moving there in 2010. DC Entertainment announced its first franchise, the DC Super Hero Girls Universe, in April 2015 with multi-platform content, toys and apparel to start appearing in 2016. Warner Brothers Pictures reorganized in May 2016 to have genre responsible film executives, thus DC Entertainment franchise films under Warner Brothers were placed under a newly created division, DC Films, created under Warner Brothers Executive Vice President John Berg and DC Chief Content Officer Jeff Johns. 
This was done in the same vein as Marvel Studios in unifying DC-related filmmaking under a single vision and clarifying the greenlighting process. Johns also kept his existing role at DC Comics. Johns was promoted to DC President and CCO with the addition of his DC films while still reporting to DCE President Nelson. In August 2016, Amit Desai was promoted from Senior Vice President, Marketing and Global Franchise Management to Exec Vice President, Business and Marketing Strategy, Direct to Consumer and Global Franchise Management. DC Entertainment and Warner Brothers Digital Networks announced in April 2017 DC Universe Digital Service to be launched in 2018 with two original series. Series, with frustration over DC films not matching Marvel Studios' results and Berg wanting to step back to being a producer in January 2018, it was announced that Warner Bros. executive Walter Harmada was appointed president of DC Film Production. After a leave of absence starting in March 2018, Diane Nelson resigned as president of DC Entertainment. The company's executive management were to report to WB Chief Digital Officer Thomas Gawecka until a new president is selected. In June 2018, Johns was also moved out of his position as Chief Creative Officer and DC Entertainment President for a writing and producing deal with the DC and WB companies. Jim Lee added DC Entertainment Chief Creative Officer title to his DC co-publisher post. In September 2018, DC became part of the newly created Warner Brothers Global Brands and Experiences division overseen by President Pam Lifford. <laughs> Logo. DC's first logo appeared on the April 1940 issues of its titles. The letters, DC, stood for Detective Comics, the name of Batman's flagship title. The small logo, with no background, read simply, A DC Publication. The November 1941 DC titles introduced an updated logo. This version was almost twice the size of the previous one and was the first version with a white background. The name, Superman, was added to a DC publication, effectively acknowledging both Superman and Batman. This logo was the first to occupy the top left corner of the cover, where the logo has usually resided since. The company now referred to itself in its advertising as Superman DC. In November 1949, the logo was modified to incorporate the company's formal name, National Comics Publications. This logo would also serve as the round body of Johnny DC, DC's mascot in the 1960s. In October 1970, DC briefly retired the circular logo in favor of a simple DC in a rectangle with the name of the title, or the star of the book. The logo on many issues of Action Comics, for example, read, DC Superman. An image of the lead character either appeared above or below the rectangle. For books that did not have a single star, such as anthologies like House of Mystery or team series such as Justice League of America, the title and DC appeared in a stylized logo, such as a bat for House of Mystery. This use of characters as logos helped to establish the likenesses as trademarks, and was similar to Marvel's contemporaneous use of characters as part of its cover branding. DC's 100-page Super Spectacular titles and later 100-page and Giant 
Issues published from 1972 to 1974 featured a logo exclusive to these editions, the letters DC in a simple sans serif typeface within a circle. A variant had the letters in a square. The July 1972 DC titles featured a new circular logo. The letters DC were rendered in a block-like typeface that would remain through later logo revisions until 2005. The title of the book usually appeared inside the circle, either above or below the letters. In December 1973, this logo was modified with the addition of the words, The Line of DC Superstars, and the star motif that would continue in later logos. This logo was placed in the top center of the cover from August 1975 to October 1976. When Janet Kahn became DC's publisher in late 1976, she commissioned graphic designer Milton Glaser to design a new logo. Popularly referred to as the DC Bullet. This logo premiered on the February 1977 titles. Although it varied in size and color and was at times cropped by the edges of the cover, or briefly rotated four degrees, it remained essentially unchanged for nearly three decades. Despite logo changes since 2005, the old DC Bullet continues to be used only on the DC Archive Editions series. In July 1987, DC released variant editions of Justice League No. 3 and The Fury of Firestorm No. 61 with a new DC logo. It featured a picture of Superman in a circle surrounded by the words, Superman Comics. The company released these variants to newsstands in certain markets as a marketing test. On May 8, 2005, a new logo, dubbed the DC Spin, was unveiled, debuting on DC titles in June 2005 with DC Special, The Return of Donna Troy No. 1 and the rest of the titles the following week. In addition to comics, it was designed for DC properties in other media, which was used for movies since Batman Begins, with Superman Returns showing the logo's normal variant, and the TV series Smallville, the animated series Justice League Unlimited and others, as well as for collectibles and other merchandise. The logo was designed by Josh Beatman of Brainchild Studios and DC executive Richard Bruning. In March 2012, DC unveiled a new logo consisting of the letter D, flipping back to reveal the letter C, and DC Entertainment. The Dark Knight Rises was the first film to use the new logo, while the TV series Arrow was the first series to feature the new logo. DC Entertainment announced a new identity and logo for another iconic DC Comics Universe brand on May 17, 2016. The new logo was first used on May 25, 2016, in conjunction with the release of DC Universe, Rebirth Special No. 1 by Jeff Johns. <laughs> Imprints Active as of 2019. DC 1937-present. Young Animal 2016-present. Wildstorm 1999 to 2010, 2017-present. Earth M 1993 to 1997, 2018-present. Vertigo 1993 present Sandman Universe 2018 present DC Black Label 2018 present 
Wonder Comics 2019 present Mad 1953 present Topic Defunct All Star 2005 to 2008 Amalgam Comics 1996-1997 jointly with Marvel Comics DC Focus 2004-2005 merged with main DC line Elseworlds 1989 to 2004 First Wave 2010-2011 licensed from Condé Nast Publications and Will Eisner Library Helix 1996 to 1998 merged with Vertigo Impact Comics 1991 to 1993 licensed from Archie Comics Johnny DC 2004 to 2012 Minx 2007-2008 Paradox Press 1998-2003 Piranha Press 1989-1993, renamed Paradox Press Tangent Comics 1997-1998 Wildstorm Productions 1999 to 2010 America's Best Comics 1999 to 2005 Cliffhanger 1999 to 2004 merged to form Wildstorm Signature CMX Manga 2004 to 2010 Homage Comics 1999 to 2004 merged to form Wildstorm Signature Wildstorm Signature 2004 to 2006 merged with main Wildstorm line Zuda Comics 2007 to 2010 Topic DC Universe DC Universe is a video-on-demand service operated by DC Entertainment. It was announced in April 2017, with the title and service formally announced in May 2018. DC Universe is expected to offer more than video content through the inclusion of an immersive experience with fan interaction that encompasses comics in addition to television. Topic Films Topic Critical and Public Reception Topic Digital Distribution DC Comics are available in digital form through several sources. Free services – In 2015, Hoopla Digital became the first library-based digital system to distribute DC Comics. Paid services – Google Play, Comixology. See also Batman Day September 17th DC Cosmic Cards DC Collectibles List of DC Comics characters List of comics characters which originated in other media List of current DC Comics publications List of films based on DC Comics List of television series based on DC Comics List of video games based on DC Comics Publication history of DC Comics crossover events List of unproduced DC Comics projects DC Films 
Topic Notes Topic Citations Topic Sources Topic External Links Official Website DC Comics at the Grand Comics Database DC Comics at the Big Cartoon Database DC Comics at the Comic Book DB Mike's Amazing World of DC Comics DC Comics Database at Wikia.com